everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be playing another episode of Mass Effect 3. Last episode finally got me a little bit in my feels for one of the first times in Mass Effect 3. There was that moment in the very beginning, of course, that was very gut-wrenching, nerve-wracking, where the Reapers are coming into Earth and they're taking over and Anderson stays behind and the kid and all of that stuff but so far we haven't really had to deal with any sort of emotions around actual teammates dealing with some of the repercussions from previous actions in mass effect one and two so i am starting to feel the weight of my decisions a little bit more every time that i hop into mass effect 3 which makes this even more fun and interesting and also sometimes scary to go into. Last episode was very solemn and a little bit gut-wrenching. Dealing with Rex being mad at us, possibly losing the relationship that we have with Rex, and everything that happened with Eve and getting to know Eve more and talking to Morden, just all of the interactions from last episode episode has still got me still got me in those in those feels right now so today i am planning on heading back to the citadel we have a ton of stuff to still do back over there there is something going on with the hanar diplomat that i think i'm gonna jump right into as well as kitty cat thank you for the boop hey dad say hi We might be able to go back and talk to Ashley. I'm not sure if she's still recovering or what's going on. She might be waiting on some clarification from Udina about where she will go next. But I would like to stop in and possibly talk to her again. Go around and talk to all of the meetings that Arya set up with us for the Blue Suns, the Blood Packs, and the Eclipse. I am excited to talk to these gang leaders and see if we can get some more firepower from them. At first, when I talked to Arya, I was very hesitant about bringing on board these organizations into our fight. But after thinking about it a lot more, after going through everything that we have been through so far, I think that every person counts at this point. Every single person counts. Every person that is trained with a gun that can shoot them at the reapers counts and i really hope that the meetings go well today because our score is still very low in the war assets and i know that it will get better over time but then again i'm also a little bit uncertain if we'll even make it because of some of the repercussions that we are already dealing with from my decisions back in mass effect 1 and mass effect 2. So I am a little bit nervous that I could be losing marks here and there, making bad decisions, calling bad shots that could eventually cause us to have a really bad ending in Mass Effect 3. I want to do everything that we possibly can to get as many war assets as we possibly can. And I think that talking to the Blood Packs, the Red Blue Suns, and the Eclipse will hopefully win us some more war asset points and hopefully Arya has handled the meetings well and we don't actually have to go assassinate somebody to get one of the mercenary groups on board and I don't even remember what the other two are up to but I know Arya has set up these appointments for us so we're gonna go down try to talk to these group leaders we have had a pretty juicy past with all of them the blue suns the eclipse and the blood pack so i'm not sure if they will remember us if it will cause problems or what all is about to go down so without further ado let's go okay so i haven't looked at the map in a little bit so i'm gonna go around and see if there's anything else for us to scan that might be new after doing everything that we did down in Sirkesh. Not sure if Petra Nebula was there before. Missing scouts, okay. Dr. Garnu. Ismar Frontier, I feel like we haven't been in there either. Gemini Sigma. I'm gonna go check this real quick. I don't know what this is. Sig 
Signal confirmed. Okay, so there is some more assets over here. Nice. Some fuel. Okay, there's one more here. Oh god, they're gonna come. Okay, they're coming. It's like the worst noise. It's so like nerve wracking. The it's like when you're in the movie theaters and oh, it's just credits. Okay, so we got to hurry up and get the heck out of here. Let's head towards Ming. Reapers eluded. Okay, so we got 100% in the hand system. Oh, there's a huge sun here. Parag. Okay. Alliance cruiser Nairobi. Interesting. And an Alliance third fleet. Nice. So it updated the Alliance third fleet. Also, thank you guys for telling me about the war asset updates. And that's why there's like new pings on stuff that I've already seen before. I'm going to have to be more mindful of that. I didn't realize that was what was happening. My luck with finding bugs in games, I think, has made me super skeptical about things like that. So I just I didn't realize what was going on. So thank you guys for the tip. Faster than light jump successful. All right. We did find some fuel, so hopefully we can get back. Um, I don't want to go here yet and investigate the missing scouts. We will head there eventually. Um, same with scanning for Dr. Garno. Garnu. Garnu. So let's see what this Ismar Frontier is real quick. Signal confirmed. Metaponto. Ooh, that looks neat. Okay, let's see what's over here. <clears throat> Advanced biotic implants. Nice. Some intel. So it's not a war asset. It's actually intel. Okay. I don't think I've seen that yet. Oh, the Krogan DMZ opened up. Gosh. We'll head there when we can finally take some time to do that mission. Okay, so I think that's pretty much um, it. Besides the places that we're going to go to eventually, that I will have time to scan eventually, um, there's nothing in these three. So I'm just going to head back down to the Citadel now. Okay, so I want to take a look at the journal real quick because I'm I don't remember what the doc 42 is. I feel like it had something to do with Aria, but I just I don't remember now because I want to do these three today. Eclipse, Blue Suns, Blood Pack. I would also like to do the one with the Hanar, yeah, Hanar Diplomat. Um, Spectre Jondam Bao suspects that a member of the Hanar diplomatic staff is indoctrinated. Find evidence. And I think we already talked to, oh no, we talked to Bailey about one of the, one of the people that we need to try to get out of jail. Yeah, this one, the Eclipse. Um, Arya Talok requested assistance uniting mercen uh, mercenary bands under her control. Speak to Commander Bailey in the Citadel embassies and then gain the allegiance of the Eclipse band. So we've already talked to Ca Commander Bailey. He said that the lady is bonkers, he, like an, an absolute wackadoo. And he wants us to go down and see for ourselves that she is actually crazy and make an informed decision based on after talking to her. So that one, it seems pretty interesting how she wants us to get this person out of jail, but the, apparently they're nuts. Um, so that was that one. Blue Suns leader wants General Oraka out of the way before committing to the Suns. So we talked to Darner already. He is an interesting character. He said that Arya is going to do some stuff with him for some control. I don't know. He was just a very... I'm explaining this horribly. But he 
basically said that we need to murder General Uraka in order to get him on our side, as well as Arya sleeping with him to get him on the side also. So there's a lot of things moving around with this Darner guy. Um, so I'm assuming we need to go find slash talk to General Uraka because we phoned up Arya after and said, what the heck is going on? We're not murdering anybody to try to get the Blue Suns on board. What are you doing? And she said, it's under control. Everything's fine. You're not gonna murder him. I just want you to go talk to him and then see if he can change his mind about being in the way of the Blue Suns. And then also put in the end there how she is not going to sleep with him to get <laughs> to get his um his vote or whatever. So that was a very interesting thing. It's funny how we've already done like half of these already. We just haven't fully completed these missions yet. So I'm excited to see what the end is here and if they all can actually get on board with helping us with the Reapers because we really, we really, really need those war assets. First, we're going to start with the Hanar Diplomat. I would like to do this one first, and we've already done half of it as well. Kasumi got involved with this one where we went into the Spectre area. We got some sort of device that helps us listen uh, in on this suspected indoctrinated Hanar Diplomat and we're gonna go see what goes on with that. I think we just have to plant the device back in the Citadel. So I don't know what that docking one was. That's the reason why we looked at this. I think it's, yeah, it's this one, which I don't wanna touch yet cause I just, I'm not ready for all of that. So I'm gonna stay away from dock 42. I would like to do, I'm trying to kind of do it by like oldest. So these ones are, are older and then the one in the Citadel, Hanar Diplomat, we've already done half of it, so that's why I decided to do that, that one today as well. In case you're kind of like wondering why I'm doing things the way that I am doing them, it's just, I looked at the journal a little bit today before I signed in with you all, and I always try to come up with like a game plan. Um, I like planning out my time in the game, based on feedback from the community and also mainly what I want to do. Um, let's be honest, it's pretty much what I want to do. Um, that's why I think I do some of the stuff very much out of order, but it is what it is. It's a blind playthrough. So let's head down to the Alliance docks. You're cleared to dock, Normandy. Do you need ground transport? Okay, so I think I'm gonna go to the hospital first. I wanna talk to Ashley. From there, we can go to the embassies and try to figure out what's going on with the rest of this Hanar diplomat situation. I need to get to the hospital. But I wanna see if, yes, Commander. if Ashley has any new dialogue or what she's doing in the hospital. Plus, I think I remember now that one guy in the hospital, he needs the intel that we picked up. So. We actually found it when we were out today, so we can give that to him. I got out of that farm and into the hills. I pulled the farm girl after me. All I wanted to do was live through the night. Nobody else could have done more. Mm. But morning came and no shuttle. Afternoon and then night and I'm hiding from husks and those Turian things. The file says the evacuation team thought your position was overrun. So after two days, I still don't have a gun, because those Turian things, you can't use theirs. I realize that shuttle isn't coming, not unless I get back to the farm and my radio. And the farm girl? She was with me. Even killed a few husks. <laughs> with a stick. <laughs> my god, with a stick. That's crazy. Hey, Dr. Mitchell isn't here anymore. Right. I will go see if Thane has anything else to say, but I think he probably doesn't. Coming by again, Shepard? I'm flattered. Yeah, nothing new. I wish the best for you, Thane. And I for you. Do not grieve for me. I have good doctors. My son visits regularly. Perhaps we will keep up via the extranet now that you are free. Until we meet again, Shepard. I'm getting like vibes from back when I used to try to talk to Kelly all the time. And it was like, let's chat. And then she'd be like, okay, I always like to talk to you. And then we're like, okay, bye. <laughs> it's like what's happening with Thane now. He's like, oh, thank you for stopping by. And then we're like, let's, I have to go. <laughs> mm. 
Where's Ashley? I guess she left already. Dane, Arya, James, Naro, Liara, Raka, Jonah, Sedaris. Oh, that must be who I need to talk to to talk to the uh, the crazy lady in the jail. Um, Garrus and Kelly. Yeah, she's not here. Oh, okay. I wonder where she went. She didn't say anything to us, I don't think. Maybe we'll get like a message or something when we get back on board the Normandy. Hi, Doctor. Didn't expect to see you again so soon. Well, we need to prescribe you another round of antibiotics. For when I <laughs> ship out? I have some bad news. Your squad applied the Medigel correctly. Oh, we've heard this. This was the very you. first talk. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm afraid we have to remove your Okay, so I think we're done with that conversation. We've heard everything about that poor Marine and his leg. I believe you were looking for these prototypes. You found them? Thank you. These biotic upgrades will save a lot of Alliance lives. We'll begin production immediately. Here, for your trouble. Okay, I was like, he gave us nothing. <laughs> We were paid in experience. <laughs> we didn't get anything else, just experience. No credits, no nothing. Okay. So let me listen in on this lady one more time, then we'll go to the so we embassy. To the farm. We snuck down the hill. We were hungry, filthy. They turned the towel into a kind of tunic. They cleaned up the bodies to make more husks, I figured. But there were still farmers alive. They were being held prisoner. And the Iro was there, directing the other forces. I could see her. I, I got within 10 meters of her. I just had my gun. What happened next? I got to the prisoners. The farm girl unlocked their restraints, and that's when they all started screaming. Why did they all start screaming? Okay, I lied. I'm going to go back like in here and see if I can kick off the conversation again. I need to get to the bottom of this. I just want to know what's going on. I want to hear the end of this story. <laughs> that work? Oh, I might have to, have to actually like leave the area or something. All right, well then let's go to the embassies and then we'll come back. Just for the dialogue, because I want to know the end of this story. It's always on a now cliffhanger. This guy's still over here. I can't take your word on this. But those are some things really my Okay. So I think this is, yeah, the terminal that I need to bypass for the Hanar. Bow, I have some possible hits. Got some strange money transfers on Balone. And Alun is sending a lot of data. Balone's clean. His money transfers are to support his mistress. Not sure about Haloon. I'll pull his bio. I'll check Haloon's personal records and pull his recent messages. Can I just note how odd it is for a Hanar to have a mistress? <laughs> you know, if Bao catches up with you, I can grant you immunity. What? If I join up? Last time I did that, you wrote me into a suicide mission. <laughs> I didn't say you had to join up. You were working your way around to it. Oh my goodness. Kasumi knew what she was signing up for. They all knew what they were signing up for. That's not fair. Perhaps you can help me. <laughs> all right, so let's go see if Bailey has anything new to say. Although I think he probably doesn't. He told us to come back to him once we've talked to that crazy lady. Let me know when you've had a chance to talk to Sedaris. Okay. So I know I saw Udina in here. The map also updated. So what changed? Bane, Arya, James, Naro, Liara, Garrus. Oh, here's the other terminal. Okay, so the next terminal they need to go to is back in the docks. Okay. Surprised Ashley isn't in here. I wonder where she is. Commander, I expect you're curious about <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Williams. <laughs> Read my mind. She said you offered her specter status. And that she'd accept it. It is true. The Council is in dire need of loyal agents. Williams is among the first of many. 
loyal agents. Yeah, she's definitely loyal to the Alliance. It's about time someone recognized Ashley's contribution. Yes, her service record speaks for itself. She's a survivor, a warrior, and most importantly, she is incorruptible. Yes. I will be keeping her close. Do not worry. The time, my schedule has a way of catching up to me. Will this be all? Yeah, she is definitely incorruptible. That is a very good point about Ashley and probably one of the many reasons why she was made Spectre by Udina himself because... He's probably like, she didn't follow Shepard into the fire of Cerberus and all of that stuff. And she's always been very loyal to the Alliance. All right. Nothing new. I should go. I'll be here. I'm glad he touched on Ashley. That was, that was cool that he talked about her upgrade status and stuff like that. I just wonder where she is. The last conversation that we had with her, she said she was going to go talk to Odina, Odina about possibly getting back on board the Normandy, but it's up to him on where he wants to send her. The prisoners were indoctrinated. I think. And once the alarm was sounded, Naira's eyes were black the whole time, not just for a second. I could feel her mind from where I was standing. The humans were in the way, attacking us. I used my biotics, flung them around. I've been horrified when Naira tore the farmers apart, but God, it's, I ripped them in half. And it felt good. There's nothing shameful about feeling an adrenaline rush during battle. I might have killed more than Naira and those husks did. She wanted them alive, to turn them, and I. And you survived. Gosh, this poor lady's been through some stuff. Now arriving at Docking Bay E. Oh, here's 24. the terminal. Val, Olun's doing some heavy lobbying for the Hanar to support the war effort. So he's clearly not indoctrinated. Who's opposing him? An unnamed Hanar recently posted here from Kaje. I'll take three. It all comes down to the war, and you trying to pull everyone into it. Would you rather the Reapers win? I'd rather spend whatever time I have left with KG. KG wouldn't want you to spend all your time plugged into that thing. Well, he shouldn't have died then. Oh, Kasumi. Well, there's that feeling again. The feeling of regret on my past decisions. I let her keep the memory box because I thought that it would help her find closure. It sounds like she did not find closure at all. And she's kind of getting pissed off at us that we are trying to get people to help the war efforts. Um, and instead she just wants to spend time with someone that is not there anymore. Oh man. I was wondering why she was acting like that when we first talked to her at the very first terminal back in the embassy. How she was like, well, you signed me up for a suicide mission. Like, she signed herself up for that. She knew fair, fair and square what she was getting herself involved in. And then to, like, go and get on us again about trying to recruit people for the war efforts and then talking... Mm. Oh, man. I definitely should have destroyed that box. What poor Batarian. He's sitting next to one of those... <laughs> one of those people that just don't read the room. That is what this guy is doing to this poor Batarian right now. He keeps going on and on and on and on. Like, they came from some stuff, especially the Batarian, whose entire homeworld is pretty much wiped out completely now. And he's sitting next to this guy that won't stop talking about his own woes and, like, issues back on Earth. When the Batarian's... Mm, that stinks that he has to sit next to him. He should probably move. Just go sit somewhere else. Be like, I have to go to the bathroom and then never come back. <laughs> I do want to look at some stuff back over here now that we have some more money, though. Harpoon gun. 
An Alliance captain on the fifth tour of the Terminus systems once said that seeing a key shock was the easiest way to tell if she was being attacked by Batarian mercenaries or slavers, since no bastard with a Kai shock means to take you alive. This powerful sniper rifle fires a harpoon-like spike that causes massive internal bleeding, and its miniaturized disruptors will also destroy synthetics. What? The rifle's biggest drawback is that it must be reloaded after every shot, but for those with steady aim and good timing, one shot is enough. Stand strong for your people with Batarian State Arms. I think I'm gonna purchase this just to kind of like see what the stats are on it. If not, I can give it to Garrus. Alright, I do want to go and talk to Kelly real quick. We haven't talked to her in a minute. I heard about the horrible things Cerberus did during the coup. That's not the organization I joined. Well, it kind of is, but... <laughs> so many here had to leave loved ones on their home walls to try to comfort them, but... I know what the Reapers are capable of. Aww. So many here had to leave loved ones on their home walls to try to comfort them, but... I'm glad that Kelly is here to comfort the people that are coming in. I think that she's the best person for that job. I also think it's admirable that every single shore leave that Garrus has, he is sitting down here in the bay, helping out his people. It just shows you how great of a guy he is. He is always down here. Anytime that we go to the Citadel, he's making sure things are running smoothly, that they have supplies, that they have space for all of the Turians coming in. It's, it's admirable that he hangs out down here all the time whereas james is like in purgatory just taking shots and like hanging out and laying off steam that way okay so let's take a look at the updated map oh it looks like it's back here i must have missed it it's at the very end i think i looked at this oh there it is i've got a list of new hanar arrivals bow forwarding it to you these are all face names. The Hanar names from the Alliance raid are soul names. And Hanar soul names are private. There's no public record. Can you get back to their personal communications? On it. Maybe we'll find names there. So how's the rest of the gang? Met up with anybody else? Garrus is helping out on the Normandy. He never could pass up a good fight. <laughs> what about Jacob? Haven't heard from him. Yeah, I haven't See? seen him. Jacob could have gotten me back onto the Normandy. Oh my god, Kasumi. Dang, Shepard. I don't know why I bugged out there, but she said, I'm surprised that you're not like, that KG isn't enough. <laughs> Val, here's the correspondence. If there's any mention of soul names. I've got it. A recent arrival, Zemandis. Soul name regards the works of the Enkindlers in despair. He was with the Alliance team that massacred the Batarians. He's been on special research assignment ever since. So he got his tentacles on some Reaper tech. Looks that way. I'm sending you the nav point for his office. I'll meet you there. Interesting. Okay. Their soul names kind of sound like a Panic at the Disco song title. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select the destination. Uh, okay, so where are we going back to the Citadel Embassies? What a long soul name. Now I wonder why they have face names or whatever they were called. Okay, so back in Suite 5... So that's over here. We're able to get in here now, right? Yes, I have spoken to you. Oh yeah, here he is. Zamandis? <clears throat> or should I say, regards the works of the Enkindlers in despair? It seems this one has been apprehended, but confinement is irrelevant. The work of the Enkindlers cannot be stopped. Why did you do this? Why are you trying to help the Reapers? We obtained information regarding the Enkindlers from classified sources. The Enkindlers? You mean the Protheans? Yes. As you are aware, Commander Shepard, the Protheans eventually became the Collectors, and the Collectors served the Reapers. Well, you've got to be kidding me. What? Therefore, as a faithful servant of the Enkindlers, we too must serve the Reapers. Um, you big stupid jellyfish. <laughs> you know, I support religious freedom for all species, but that's just crazy. 
Yes. Your skepticism does not matter. When the Enkindlers uplift us as their chosen sapients, the galaxy will bear witness. What makes you think that they're not going to murder you too? What is going... What? You're under arrest? Will that even help anything? I mean, if all of the Enkindlers have this mindset, then we're in trouble. What is going on? Watch me. I don't think the Enkindlers are going to be doing anything today. Your belief in your victory is mistaken. Our planetary defense network is largely automated. It can be disabled with a single virus. Which I have just uploaded. What? Damn it. Wait. A virus would be detected unless sent on low priority channels, which have a time lag. I may be able to block the upload. <gasps> you may be delayed. Um, help him. I'll handle this. Got it. Uploads disabled. Looks like we're in the... Wait. He's got some kind of fail safe. A bomb? Oh my god. <gasps> Kasumi. She was here the entire time. She was an old friend. What? I intended to arrest her. She helped me take down the collectors and she just gave her life to save the Hanar home world. <gasps> what? Point taken. It was an honor to work with you, Shepard. When the time comes, I'll be there to return the favor with a few friends. What? You can come out now. How'd you know? <sighs> Lucky guess. There's no way you're recruiting me to fight in a galactic war. The Crucible Project needs technical experts. <sighs> I'm not a scientist. No, but you're the best thief in the galaxy. And you can hack unfamiliar technology better than anyone. They could use your help. And think of it. All that expensive tech just lying around. It's not like they're going to check your pockets at the end of the project. You say the nicest things. All right. I'm in. And Shep. Nice working with you again. Didn't appreciate that. That was so mean. Oh, my heart. All right. So we have her as a war asset. Spectre unit as a war asset also. Hanar and Drell forces as a war asset. Nice. God, that was so scary. I was like, there's no way that they would kill her off by a simple shock of a computer like that. But then I was like thinking in the back of my mind, I don't know what kind of software they put on here that like, I just, I got so scared. And then Shepard's like very calm demeanor during that entire thing was both comedic but also like super scary towards the end because i was like why isn't she freaking out that kasumi is dead <laughs> what is going on oh my gosh my heart okay so all of that is is done we'll have to go read those war assets when we're back on the normandy um later today <laughs> i wonder if we got any like codexes or anything like that no all right, so now we're going to head over and start these Aria missions. Um, the Blood Pack, Blue Sun's Eclipse. I'll just go from top to bottom. So the first one is to speak to Narl in the Presidium Commons um, and gain allegiance of the Blood Pack. So let's go talk to Narl. I was like, they would not kill off no, Kasumi that way. There is no way. <laughs> How like... After all, it's not like I'm the reason you're breaking up <laughs> with him, right? It's the war. I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. You said he'd been distant and that the war made everything clearer. That things weren't working. Yes, but meeting you was what made me realize how bad it had gotten. I just... I'm not the one who broke up your relationship. Really? Was it someone else who pinned me to the wall with her mouth? Oh my god. This entire conversation is awful. Every single aspect of it. You guys are both in the wrong. Stop trying to blame one another or place blame on the poor guy that's fighting for his life out there and your lives. What's wrong with you? All right, so Narl is upstairs here. I don't know what I'm about to walk into. All right, blood back. Quick, hands behind your back. We'll be here in a minute. What the hell are you talking what? about? Crete, Blood Pack's leader. 
her, you bring some of the Greek commander Shepard. Crete pledges the gang to her. We're just luring him into the open so we can take him out. Not the best start to our friendship, Narl. He's coming. Put your hands behind your back and uh, try to look like I beat you up or something. What? I'm gonna trust you? I'll kill you if you're lying? I guess I have to trust him, because I, I, I'm trying to trust Arya, so I... okay. This better be on the up and up. Quiet! Seems bad. <clears throat> Arya to look even more powerful than Crick thought. Her instructions on boarding Citadel undetected were one thing. Now this... <sighs> Commander Shepard wants you to know. Your head will be hood ornament on my personal shuttle. <laughs> Keep your distance, Creed. So, do you agree to Arya's terms? <laughs> uh, most definitely. Arya can use blood pack as she sees fit. Wasn't talking to you, Creed. Grill? What? <laughs> you have my word. Now open fire! What? Not him. Grill's next in line to take over. Arya's deal is with him. Yes. Yes. I'm Arya's mole, Shepard. You've scratched my back. Now I'll scratch yours. He wanted to be in line. Word of advice. Don't double-cross Arya. I may be ambitious, but I'm not crazy. Uh-huh. Good work, What Mom. the heck? Thanks for the gun. Anytime, Shepard. Grill and I will let Arya know the light is green. So that's that. Terminus fleet wore out. <laughs> what? So he just wanted to be the next in, or the one in line now, or the ruler of the blood packs. So that was that. Man, everyone wants you to scratch their back so that you can get your scratch. It's crazy the amount of politics that are going on just to fight the Reapers and get everybody on board. Holy. Yeah, she's right here. Hello, Shepard. Nice to see you. I missed this place. It's good to be off ship for a while. Hello again. I feel like it's been so long since we've had like a good long discussion with Liara. I'm really looking forward to that day because it's been so long. Like, I feel like it was in the very, very beginning that we got to talk to Liara and have like a relationship form. And now it's just kind of like, yeah, we're back together. Anyways, see ya whenever. <laughs> it's just, we haven't really been able to have any deeper conversations with her since then. Okay, so here's General Araka. I forget which one he is a part of. He is part of the Blue Suns. All right. And then the one where I need to go talk to the officer is Eclipse. All right. Commander Shepard. <clears throat> General Araka. I think we met in Korra's den. You were pretty miserable, if I recall. Yes. Neck deep in drink just before I retired. I'm clean now. Reinstated. I hear you're taking on the Blue Suns. I need to do my part for the Citadel, Commander. The Blue Suns are raiding CSEC weapons shipments. I'm putting a stop to that. Those mercs are seriously jeopardizing the Citadel's ability to defend itself if the war comes here. When the war comes here. That's kind. There are other ways to secure weapons, General. You don't think I've tried? There's a black market dealer on Citadel right now. But he won't sell his top-line arms. The Reapers are destroying everything in their path, and I can't stop them. But I can stop the Blue Suns. Oh, man. I see his point and where he's coming from. But we need to get the Blue Suns on our side. I'll get the weapons for you. Walk away from this. He obviously needs the weapons. I mean, everyone needs weapons right now. They need top-of-the-line all of the weapons, all of the ammo. I don't blame him for looking out for the people on the Citadel that need them and his own self. I just wonder how we will get the weapons for him. Let me see what I can do for you. I'd appreciate your help, and I'll have a plan of action ready if things fall through. 
Okay, so I'm guessing we have to go back and talk to Arya again. In the meantime... I'm willing to bet you look worse than I do. Yeah, well, did you hear about the chemical fire and those kids from level E24 that they brought in last night? Good. Yeah, I was there when they brought them in. Shit. I am so sorry. I shouldn't have brought that up. Look, if you need anything... I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, and I feel for them. As someone that previously worked in a hospital for many, many years, when things go horribly, horribly wrong and you have to deal with it, it's really hard to disconnect from what you see. I've connected with Jonas Sedaris and her cell, Commander. You can speak with her via that console. Thanks. We'll need some privacy. Of course. When you're done, you can also contact Commander Bailey from that terminal. Okay. Who's that spying on me now? Ah, uh, I see. Good. Arya's indentured servant has finally come to deliver me to freedom. I want to talk with you before I secure your release. Bullshit. You have no choice. And when I get out, heads will roll. Oh, 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 oh yes. Oh my god. You killed a lot of my people. Don't think I've forgotten that. Leave it in the past. Don't threaten me. Who is this lady? Leave it in the past. There's bigger fish to fry here. There are so many bigger fish to fry. I was going to say don't threaten me, but I want her to stop being crazy. I don't want to escalate the situation. You have to move on. And I will, once all my enemies are dead. I love holding all the cards. Even in here, you must deal with me. I have all the power. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Sane, my second in command, is a weak-willed toady. If he had balls, he'd leave me to rot and take control himself. But he won't defy me. He knows better. Now get me out of here, Shepard. Tell Bailey to release me. Bailey, I've seen Sedaris. So she's crazy, right? It would be ridiculous to let her out. We'll find another solution, or it doesn't matter. I mean, if she comes, if we let her out, she's gonna try to murder us. She made that very clear. We're one of her enemies. She has an enemy hit list. I feel like that's a really bad idea to let her out. We need to find another way. She's a menace. Let me try to make this problem go away. Yeah, she's... Sounds good. I'll hold the line until I hear from you. She's gonna cause more stink than is worth it. But I just hope that Arya will be reasonable. I'm gonna go take a look at these consoles once more. Make sure I didn't miss buying anything that I can afford now. I think I'm gonna buy this barrel because I think I used this. Mm, the Geth Plasma SMG. I remember this from ME2. All right, and I'll buy this upgrade as well. Thank you. Come again. Welcome to Kanala Exports. <gasps> a new fish, a striped dark fish. I wonder. Oops. I wonder if they're also flying fish. <laughs> Those fish were so unhinged last episode. I guess I could go ahead and get the high caliber barrel. I'm not going to worry about magazine upgrade because we don't use SMG, but people on our crew do. So I'm going to go ahead and get that for people that we run with. And I think I also use the recoil system as well. Okay. Let's go see who this canic person is, though. I'm gonna take a look at these terminals too. Welcome to Casa <laughs> Fabrication Weaponry. Proceeds from all purchases go to help our men and women serving in the Alliance. <gasps> oh, we can buy models here. Model Alliance Fighter, Model Alliance Dreadnought. Nice. Assault Rifle Magazine Upgrade, nah. I've spoken with many Batarian refugees here, Shepard. 
it may interest you to know that they are much more agreeable when the hegemony is no longer watching. Mm. Excuse me, Shepard. I am looking through files and videos of human behavior. I have 1.24 million windows open, God. but your request is important to me. Please hold. Like all of us back in like college, <laughs> with like a bunch of tabs open, like chugging along with, gosh, Internet Explorer. Just absolutely breaking the computer. Is it time to return to the Normandy? I'm getting propositioned with increasing frequency. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think I'm bugging her. <laughs> Should probably take a break. No, actually, my husband. Welcome to Nosastra Sporting Goods. Okay. Um. I think I'll buy this SMG recoil. From the terminus systems. Power damage. Yeah, let's go ahead and buy that too. Good hunting. <laughs> okay, here's Canic. Look, Commander, I don't want any trouble. I'm authorized to sell here, and all my arms are legal, see? These are lightweight weapons. Where's your top end inventory? Shit, you slumming for C Sec too? <laughs> I already got harassed by the old Turian with a bad attitude. Yeah, I got much better stuff, but it's off the market. Galaxy's going belly up. Credit won't mean anything once the Reapers rip through. What do you mean? So what exactly are you saying? Whatever happens, I figure there'll be survivors, but it'll be chaos. I'm betting things will run on a barter system. God. So I'm getting a jump. My best stock only trades for hard goods and artifacts with real value. I'm disgusted, but he's also very smart to think this way. He's really preparing for end times here. What will you take? I'm not asking. Oh, we can't really afford to buy him off, but I don't want to get on his bad side and potentially lose out on more guns. So what gets me access to your top shelf? Heh, the Turian just waved credits in my face and then spat on it. Nice to see you have flexibility. If you find any rare pieces when you're out saving the galaxy, bring them back. Then I'm happy to share my top stock with C-Sec. No problem. Rare pieces. Outside of that, I gotta stick to my guns. <clears throat> okay. So he wants us to find some stuff for him? Oh, man. Credits don't talk with me, Commander. C-Sec wants my top of the line. You gotta come through with a couple of artifacts. Artifacts. All right. So we gotta go find some artifacts for this guy. Um, I don't know who Sane is. Maybe we should go to Cargo Hold A and see who Sane is. Yeah, let's go see who that is. Welcome, Commander Shepard. One moment, please. I feel like new names just keep like popping up and I'm supposed to go talk to him because the journal is not going to hold my hand at all in this game, which I think is pretty cool. But at the same time, um, it makes doing these kind of quests very interestingly annoying. <laughs> That's awful. Having to watch the world disappear before you while you're just doing your job up in a weather satellite. I mean, he's lucky because he's alive, but that has to be hard to watch. I can't even imagine. Men, get ready for trouble. Trouble? Huh? Not here for that, Zane. Just want to talk about Jonas Sedaris's release. Oh, you're the one coordinating that, right? My idea, you know. Arya came to me looking to gain Eclipse support. I'm leveraging it to bust the boss out. Um, then you kill her? You don't need Sedaris? <sighs> leveraging it to bust the boss out. Yeah, you don't need, you don't need Sedaris. Saying you should run Eclipse. Yeah. Huh? You can do it. Leave Sedaris locked up and make the deal with Arya yourself. Hmm. Arya would be a step up. And you think she'd let me run things? I don't see why not. Right. Right. Then that's the plan. 
Keep Sedaris in jail. I'll call Arya right away. Good man. Nice. Okay. He seems a lot more sane than Sedaris. And she did say herself that he knows everything about her role and he's the right-hand man and he could take over at any time, but he's too much of a soft person to do that. So that's good. I'm glad that that worked out. So does that mean that this one is done? Find a way to deal with the rock. Uh, um, okay, so this one's still here. So there must be something else that I need to do. Maybe go back and talk to her again. Or possibly go and talk to Arya, but he said that he was going to go talk to Arya. Okay. Shepard, the council withdrew the release order for Sedaris. Arya Talok of all people got him to do it. Crazy. You can say that again. Thanks for your help, Shepard. Okay, so we just had to wait for the phone call to come through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just be patient. Welcome, Commander Shepard. All right. The so destination. the only other thing that we really have to do right now is Area of to go find those artifacts for elevator. that guy so that we can get those top shelf guns. So I don't know how we're going to go out and do that. I'm guessing it's just like a planet now scan situation. I'm not really 100% sure. Nothing else is showing up on the map for me. So maybe we just have to go out and like scan some planets or something. Oh God, he always freaks me out, that keeper. I don't, I feel like I've already scanned everything. Because everything is like 100% already. I don't understand where we would find... Oh, uh, look, find artifacts. Okay, so it kicked, it did uh, show me. Man, this journal. It's pretty useless. <laughs> I just have to go look at like the maps to find out what I'm supposed to be doing next. Draw the dots myself. Crazy. All right, so it's not in this system because it says 100% recovered. It looks like it's down in Volar. I found something. Okay. Vanna. So let's go ahead and scan here. Black market artifacts. Nice. These are like tedious little... Go talk to this person. Go talk to this person. <laughs> Just trying to get these people on our side. I am excited to look at the war asset board after we complete all of this, though. I hope we're farther along than we were before. I think siding off last time we were at like 1200, maybe. We were... We finally hit 1k. You're cleared to dock, Normandy. Do you need ground transport? Mm, let's go to the commons. I need a cab to the Presidium. It'll be there momentarily. It is nice that they do that. They don't just like make you keep going and taking the rapid Where transit. Going? Because if this isn't serious, then we need to talk. These are two different things. You're important to me, but I... It's not healthy to rush from one relationship to another. Well, I need to rush somewhere. If I end it with him, then I lose my partner benefits, and that includes my apartment. Okay, so maybe, just for your own security, you need to figure out an exit strategy before you talk with him. I thought I had. And I cherish the time we've had together, but... Yeah. Wow. That sucks. <laughs> to be honest, she kind of gets what she deserves she made her bed she has to lay in it now maybe you shouldn't cheat on your husband commander unless you can find a new source of weapons for c-sec oh, oh i'm putting sorry. together a task force to stop I, the i'm working on it i'm working on it i'm sorry i'll get you your weapons general it's fine 
I forgot I had to go talk to the weapons dealer first. Okay, so go talk to Kanik. I don't think we've ever been down here. You're back, huh? Any luck out there? Here, Actually, I've got some pieces for you. Done deal, Commander. Check in with General Oraka. You'll see I'm making CSEC very happy. Okay. All right, so let's go back and talk to Oraka. Hopefully he's happy. <laughs> With the weapon situation now. Commander Shepard, I was just contacted by a black market dealer who's donating high end weapons to CSEC. He wanted you to know. Sounds like you came through. And the Blue Suns can go about their business. Now we'll be focusing on Citadel defense. It won't bring Palavin back, but it's something. Thank you. I think even with the amount of guns, I mean, it sucks. It really sucks that the gangs were taking all of their guns and using them for things that are not worldly problems right now. But I don't even think with like the amount of guns they could have taken out, taken back their planet. It's just, it's so sad what's happening down there. It will take a very big effort to try to stop them from destroying worlds. So let's go down and see if we can talk to her back in Purgatory and head out from there. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please select. one moment, please. Maybe we can go talk to James too. I wonder if he has anything new to say. Now arriving at ward level Purgatory. I hate stuck here. I hate this guard duty assignment. I hate everything right now. Nothing to do about it. We each stand duty in our own ways. At least your wife and the kids went on that trip you mentioned a while back. Where was it again? They canceled the trip. Donated the funds to some charity when Earth was hit. Aww. And then, Palavin. Shit. I'm sorry. I hope that they're okay, but it sounds... Sounds bad. That was really kind of them to like, not go on their trip and be selfless and give it to Earth. That's crazy. Bastards <laughs> had us. Assholes. Shit, they just kept coming and coming. And not even sure from where. Fucking hell. And poor Bilal. They didn't have to take him out like that. Brutal. 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 Take him out like that. Bilal. That's the guy that they're looking for. This must be that crew from the father upstairs. Oh no, they didn't have to take him like that. So I'm guessing he got converted into one of the Cerberus soldiers. That's what it sounds like. I wonder if that was like a spoiler. I wonder if I was supposed to hear that. We're the dancers. I want dancers. Well, the dance floor's over there. Not dancers, dumbass. Dancers. I'm here for surely, not the peonies wall. I, I, I know. Oh, come on. If there's an ass kicking somewhere on this station, you guys know where it is. This lady is so wild. <laughs> and the guy has had, like, absolutely enough of it. He's like, I really don't want to be talking to you right now. I'm going to go hang out with James first, and then we'll go talk to Arya. When we get back to Earth, I'll buy it. Nice. You sure you don't want to buy me a drink? He's just down here getting lit. Get here for a while. Yep, he's just hanging out, having a good old time. <laughs> Gotta let loose in your own way, I guess. Look who's here. The Blue Suns, Blood Pack, and Eclipse are in my pocket. I'll send them to war when you're ready for them. Is there anything on your mind? What exactly have I acquired? <laughs> An army that's willing to fight dirty to do the things your respectable militaries won't do. Eclipse Max and Vorcha legions are excellent candidates for vanguards in any ground offensive. 
Well worth the little song and dance I had you perform, I'm sure. Yeah, I feel like the song and dance sucked. And it's hard knowing that we have these mercenary groups um, that I don't agree with the how they act and um, who they are. But it is good. And like I said in the very beginning, we need all of the war assets that we can possibly get our hands on right now. So it's a catch-22. Are the blood pack falling in line? With Grill in charge? Where all systems go. It's his voice, but my words. Couldn't have asked for a better puppet. The Blood Pack have committed 2,000 Vorcha to the cause. They'll make up the bulk of the army. That's crazy. Is Darner Boss cooperating with you now? Getting General Araka off the Blue Sun's back did the trick. Voss still thinks he'll be getting me on mine, idiot. Yeah. But he's committed his veteran soldiers to me in turn. I commit them to you. Nice. What have we gained by having the Eclipse at our disposal? A ton of mechs and elite troopers for stealth operations. Sane has turned out to be more malleable than Jonas Sedaris ever was. My control of the Eclipse runs even deeper than I expected. You surprised me by taking such agency in the matter. Yeah, I feel like that was the best way to handle the situation. I'm not sure if I would have done more renegade reactions if we could have actually gotten her out of jail. And I just feel like that would have caused a lot of issues. But I don't know anymore. It seems like any reaction, whether it's on the top or on the bottom, they all have repercussions at this point. Um, so, yeah, you just you never know. How do you plan on taking Omega back? I think I'm going to employ violence. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to slap Omega right out of the elusive man's greedy little hands. I'm actually, like, on board with that. Hell yeah. Do it. We'll talk later. I'm sure. The elusive man is causing so many problems that do not need to be problems right now. There is just, there's too much. There's too much going on with the elusive man and what he's doing. Have we drank up here before? I feel like I haven't taken any drinks up here. I didn't even know this was here. I wonder if it's one of those bars where like you drink a lot and then someone says something. Oh, there's a different cutscene. Commander Shepard getting down. <laughs> that was a long pause. Whoa. Okay, something's happening. Oh, no. Are we passed out on the couch? Oh my god, we're next to Arya. <laughs> How embarrassing. We just got done talking to all of the leaders and making these really intense decisions and getting them on board. And then we're like binge drinking, <laughs> passing out. I love the little like drinking scenes in this game. They're really funny. Like the one where that guy tried to poison us back on Omega. All right. So I think we've pretty much talked to everybody that we can back in the Citadel area. We've done all that we can do here for now. So I'm going to head back to the Normandy and go around see if we can talk to anybody else we didn't really do much like main questing it was just kind of those little things that Arya wanted me to do but I do want to take a look at the war asset board real fast and then maybe from there we can begin going back to find the Turian ship that went missing that is one of the things that has been racking my brain I want to know what 
the Turian ship was doing down there in Tuchanka, how it ended up getting destroyed, if they're okay, going to try to rescue them, and maybe if we complete the mission, Victus will actually be more willing to let us know what was going on, or maybe someone on the crew will spill the beans or something, but I'm interested to see what happens with that. Yeah. Um, all right, so nothing new with Rex. That's it for now, Rex. Let's get back to work. All right, then. See what's new on here. It looks like our min our score is now 1,700. I think it was like either 1,200 or 1,400 last time we left it. So we did get a bit more strength, but we're still not even at the bare minimum line yet, which kind of scares me. Um... Hopefully we can get up there eventually. And then we have Kasumi, um, who gave me a scare today. Thought we murdered her. She got dead or it was just a whole thing. But Kasumi's kind of making some jabs at us. She's making jabs about um, working for us before and putting her life on the line, even though she knows what she signed up for and asking us why we're trying to get more people on board for our fight with the Reapers, which is a very odd question. And then she followed it up with how she wishes that she could just spend more, more time with Kenji. And then I started to realize that maybe I made a mistake in helping her keep the technology we should have probably destroyed it it had a ton of secrets on it that would be really bad if it got leaked and she ended up leaking it herself from my understanding so all around it was a really bad call to let her keep the box of memories yeah i'm just i'm nervous about her and her mental health and everything else that happened because i decided to keep this black memory box thinking that i would help her find closure and instead kind of making her live in the past. She seems like she is very much stuck with Kinji in that memory box, spending too much time with him. And it's really sad to see. It's not something that I wanted for Kasumi. It makes me, yeah, it just makes me really sad. From here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start this Turian platoon mission. Um, on Tuchanka because I am very interested on what the heck they were doing there. So Primarch Victus reported that the Turian ship on a secret mission crashed on Tuchanka, land on Tuchanka to rescue the platoon. So I'm hoping that it doesn't kick off anything like the priority on Tuchanka because we're not ready for that. Um, I think there was something else that we had to do over in Tuchanka as well. But I'm just, I'm not ready for any of that. I hope that it doesn't kick any of that off. So yeah, I just, I hope that it doesn't kick off any other missions or where I'm doing this out of line. I am just genuinely very curious about what is going on and I wanna unfold more of the Tuchanka stuff that we started to unwrap a little bit in last episode, so. Maybe we'll get into a little bit of combat today. I have a feeling it will. we're going to leave on a little bit of a spoiler note, but we'll see what happens. Extract Turian survivors, investigate Cerberus presence. This is where Tujanka is, right? The Krogan DMZ. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna wait to scan the other systems. It looks like there is a couple other. Yeah, Dranic and Nith. I'm gonna wait until we do more on Tujanka. We'll have time to go back and, and rescan. All right, so we're heading back to Tujanka. And it looks like it's giving us an... Okay, nice. So we can go to the downed vessel and then we can go and choose the Cerberus presence later. So that's good. But it's giving me an option to kind of um, pick and choose which ones I would like to do. Oh, I wanted to read the Tuchanka thing, but it wouldn't let me like scroll down at all. All right. So I'm definitely going to take Garrus on this one. I think that he 
would be very interesting to take because we are rescuing Turians. I don't know if he knows anything about this mission. Seeing how top secret it is, he probably doesn't. Um, but we'll see what happens down there. And I think I'm going to take Javik with me. I have not taken Javik yet on any missions, so I'm excited to finally take him on one. Maybe he'll elaborate a little bit on Tuchanka and how he feels about the entire situation. This crash site's a nightmare. Edie, try to raise Lieutenant Victus. Yes, ma'am. For a Turian commander, what happened here is... Let's just say the Turian coat is not forgiving. And that it's his son is bad for the Primarch. Promoting family without merit can bite you in the ass. What's strange is the Primarch knows that. Commander, I have to land well back from the main crash site. That the best you can do? Yes, ma'am. The Reapers seem unaware of our presence. You might get the jump on them. All right, set her down. Let's save this platoon. Edie, did you raise Lieutenant Victus? Yes, but the connection is bad. Patch me in. This is Commander Shepard, Alliance Navy. Do you read? This is Lieutenant Tarquin Victus of the 9th platoon. We're pinned by Reaper harvesters and taking heavy casualties. Also, there are pockets of my men scattered along the crash trajectory. Jeez. Lieutenant, I need you to fire a flare so I can find your position. Got it. This sounds bad. Let's move. Yeah, it sounds really bad. All right. So Garrus seems to think that he sent him on this mission just because he's his son instead of having like actual merit. And that sounds really bad because if there's a bunch of murdered Turians down here, he that, is death, that death is on his hands. I'm not sure what they were doing down here. Why the heck he sent his son? Um, I guess he did mention that it's because he trusts him and this is a very sensitive task, but you can't just throw somebody in here that doesn't really know what they're doing. You're gonna get people killed. So hopefully that's not the case. I don't, I hope everyone is still alive down here, but it looks, it looks and sounds pretty bad. There has to be some casualties at this point for sure. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and I think I'm gonna put slam. No, I'm gonna put his dark channel up here. Um, yeah, actually I'm gonna replace the overload with slam. And we'll run that for a bit and see how it goes. Okay. Secretarian mission on Tachanka is especially odd. Thoughts? It doesn't matter. Our mission is clear. It doesn't matter. Our mission is there. I feel like I chose the right person. Like, I know we have... I chose Javik because we haven't run with Javik yet, and I was wanting to run with him. But Javik comes from a long military background, and I feel like this mission was actually perfect for him because it's obviously an, a mission gone wrong and i'm interested to see what he has to say about it this could get Silence. very Enemies ahead. interesting quick we don't <gasps> want them to call for backup oh my god ew why are they just standing there like that oh that looks so creepy oh <gasps> whoa Nice bombs, Javik. Took out three of them with one hit. You just kind of like float to the ground after. All right, nothing else in here. Escape pod. Our first casualties. Oh, Survived no. the crash, but then a harvester took out the pod. Died in the explosion. Or dragged out and eaten by husks. Oh. 
Sorry, the cat is like clawing at the monitor. <laughs> it's very distracting. Stop. Go to sleep. Ooh, a tempest. I'm so screw it. Sarah's just gonna like scratch my monitor one day. She's laying down now. I think she might go to sleep. Okay. I have a visual on the enemy, and there's an escape pod just beyond. Looks like the Turians are in tough. Enemies up ahead don't know we're here. Ew, look at Surprise their butts. Surprise side for once. I like it. Exactly. Let's go. That's true. We don't ever really get a chance to be, like, stealthy. <laughs> we're always... We're always in the middle of battle and everyone knows we're there. Nice. What's that? Okay, there. It looks like there's another one over here. There's one there and they're taking care of it. Oh, maybe he went over on that side. Harvester! Incoming harvester! Harvester! Oh my god. The harvester has compromised the Turian pod! Great. Over here! They're flying away. Thank you. Don't stop for us. We'll hit the main crash site. There's another pod ahead. Okay, so at least they're still here. It looks like there are definitely a lot of casualties They'll we've seen. Fight another battle. Yeah, we've seen some Turians that have been downed so far. Not good. Look what they've been doing down here. Keep moving. We need to find the main crash site ASAP. <sighs> Being the son of Adrian Victus is a lot to live up to. It's a big military name on Palavan. War's expected to run in the Victus blood. War was a way of life for my people as well. If you couldn't fight the Reapers, you were left behind. Harsh. Very harsh. The faced in. We're getting a lot of new weapons here. We're going to have to go to the Spectre um, shooting range and go try out all the new weapons next time. What was that? Is there anything over here? Oh, just a dead Turian. Okay. There's definitely some stuff going on over there. Looks like we got the jump. Follow my lead. Okay, so they don't know we're here. It's back. What did that just shoot? Oh, it shot a bunch of husks. Shooting in that blue spot does like more damage or not? I can't really tell. It doesn't look like it. All right, there's the other pod. Looks like they're free now. Can I get up here? I think we saved all those men. No. Over here. All right, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything back here. Look like it. This way. 
Okay. I'm coming. How many teams did they have down here? It's crazy how many, like, pods there are. It's... For such a low-key, quiet mission. A lot of guys down here. Shepard here, what's your status? We're in deep. Commander, what's your ETA? Hang tight. We're on our way. Okay, new chest plate, some ammo. More dead Turians. What's this? Flight recorder? Arnick, how's our velocity? Deceleration online. We'll survive. Victus is going to pay for this. Court Marshal or hanging. How will the commander leave this down? When we find him, we'll ask. Yeah, it's gonna it's he's never gonna live this down. There's no way. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Why can't I pick this up? I don't have full ammo. Oh, another Yup. Credits. Look at this place. It kind of looks like a Ferris wheel over there. Is that what that is? There's no way that's a Ferris wheel. I mean, I know Tuchanka once upon a time was a thriving civilization before the nuclear war, but I don't think they had like Ferris wheels, right? It's really some sort of like war mechanism or something. I don't know. Shepard here. Well, okay. Okay, I need to not die. Oh my god, look at that two health point. <laughs> I don't know how I just survived. We're gonna take a little bit of meds right now. This thing is trying to do the murders. Jeez. Harvester ahead and on the run. Okay. That was intense. Grab some ammo, make sure there's nothing over here. Bomb. against the Reapers. Krogan-Turian animosity is ancient and intense. It's inborn. And I need them to work together, so let's not complicate things. They were trying to hold back the Krogans by being here? Is that what he's implying? I'm just making sure there's no loot. Is that the reason why they're down here? to hold back Krogans during a time like this? What? What? I feel like that can't be the main reason. Also, I don't have any, like, qualms with Primarch Victus, but, like, how could you send your son out knowing that he is not capable enough? I just, I don't know. It seems strange to me. All right, let's move! Reaper blood with spear! Okay. For Palavin! For Palavin? Oh my god, Garrus. 
I need my eyes to see. I can't be crying right now. Whoa, a brute, a brute. Oh, damn. Here goes Garrus. I'll get him back up after I take care of this brute. He's almost down. Here we go. All right, let's get Garrus back up. I'm gonna start running out of ammo here soon. Coming. Who's down, Garrus again? Grenade. Oh, it got me. It got me. No! All right, let's go ahead and do some meds. Get Garrus back up. Okay, last bullet. <laughs> I need to go get some more bullets. All right, I'm gonna make run for it. Run for ammo. Is that it? Do we clear? I still hear stuff. Yeah, we're not clear yet. Okay, I need to get on the other side of the wall. That's Javik. That's a loud noise. Now my team's both down. Let's go ahead and get him back up. This is intense. I'm gonna have to go take another ammo run around. I'm losing ammo so fast. Okay, here we go. What is he fighting right now? The harvester? Is there more? I wish I could see the health on this thing. Are you being shot from over here? Let's try to get this thing down more. Looks like it's like stuck there. Like it's kind of like bugged out a little. <gasps> Let's go! Whoa! <gasps> Harvesters explode when they die. Okay. Jeez. Codex for a black star. We also got a codex for a harvester too. All right, so let's go ahead. I know it's like, I just need a breather after that. That was a really hard battle. I'm surprised we made it through all of that. The Reaper called Harbin. The sight of a Holy. Reaper harvester in flight nearby is one of the first <laughs> indications that a Reaper invasion is underway. Their massive wingspan allows them to quickly cover the distance between them and their prey. In the harvester's mouth are two heavy guns that fire in an alternating pattern. The harvester's most fearsome quality, however, is that its appearance guarantees that Reaper ground troops are not far behind. Yeah, because it like shoots them out of their little hole thing. Dang, and apparently they explode upon death. 
The Reaper, the Reaper weapon, nicknamed Black Star, is so advanced that Alliance scientists can only offer speculation about how it works. The gun appears to exploit an element zero core and mass effect fields to fire gravitational singularities, Ooh. micro black holes, that revert to their natural lethality when they impact a solid object. Researchers theorize that the blast tears apart the strong nuclear forces that hold the target's atoms together, resulting in a localized fusion reaction in light atoms and a localized fission reaction in heavy atoms. If that hypothesis is correct, the weapon alters nuclei, thus changing the chemical composition of the target. This destroys organic tissue, corrodes surviving armor, and leaves a visible trail of light-emitting particles. Dang. Although some might argue that the Black Star's single launch capability makes it a liability, its capacity for utter destruction is essential when the user requires large-scale, instantaneous damage. Wait, are we carrying this gun right now? Why do we have it on us right now? With one bullet. What? But it's not... What? Okay. Maybe we were supposed to use it during that fight and I didn't realize that it was over there. Interesting. All right. Let's make sure all of our ammo is full. I'm scared to like switch away from this gun because I want to shoot it at least once. But it looks like we might be done now. Okay. <clears throat> Lieutenant Victus? Commander Shepard, my men and I are in your debt. Thank you for saving so many. What happened here? He screwed up. Stand down, soldier. These men are dead because of him. I said, stand down. Hey, I just saved all your asses, so everyone just calm down. <laughs> Lieutenant, what's going on here? I made a bad call. This is all on me. I chose caution and clever tactics over a head-on attack. And my men paid the price. What did you do? You mean the crash? Yes. We could see on Hollow that Reaper forces were blocking our intended path. Staying on course guaranteed heavy casualties. So I chose a safer route, skirting the enemy. And that took us low and through these ruins. When we encountered resistance, there was no room to maneuver. Suddenly, we were in a fight for our lives. A lot of my men lost that fight. Damn. Bad calls happen. Owning your mistake takes guts. But you have to get over it and move on. Of course. It's just fresh right now. Our mission's still a failure. When we've stabilized the injured, we'll head back to the fleet. You're abandoning your mission? We're down over 30 men. It'd be suicide. What exactly did you come here to do? There's a bomb on the planet. We were sent to defuse it. What? A bomb? How big? Enormous. Cerberus has it. Lieutenant, if Cerberus has that bomb, you have to finish your mission. What? Haven't these men sacrificed enough? I understand. This kind of sacrifice is the hardest to ask for, but your men signed on for it, and so did you. My men have lost hope, Commander. Even if I wanted to finish the mission, they don't. It's your job to make them want to. How? <laughs> Kick their asses? <laughs> Appeal to their honor? What would we do? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Inspire them, threaten them. Lieutenant, if Cerberus succeeds, the Reapers divide and conquer us. And then that is on them. It's very true. Listen up. This isn't about your fears and grievances. Fears? We're only afraid of the next messed up order you give. Irrelevant. Court martial death and dishonor awaits anyone who walks at his duty. We are Turian. We finish what we came here to do, or we die trying. Shuttles arrive any minute, so get your asses in gear. Let's move! Wow, Commander, this is nuts. Cerberus planted a bomb on Tuchanka? 
How did use the help? Send me the nav point. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. That'll give us time to do a little recon. See what we're up against. Victus, you have a second chance here. Make their sacrifice count. Understood, Commander. Hope to see you at the rendezvous. How did they find out about this? And how didn't the Krogan know? Cerberus bomb. What the hell is going on, Commander? And what do the Turians have to do with it? Right? Coordinates Victus gave me place it in the Kelphic Valley. It's a heavily populated area. That's all I know. My gut says something's not right here. What do you suggest? Get the Primarch to come clean. Should we alert the Krogan military? I'd wait. We're in the dark here. Krogan Turian relations are fragile until the genophage is cured. Let's not push it. And how about this bomb? How many troops does Cerberus have on this? No idea. All I know is we can't have them detonating that bomb. Keep me in the loop. Hack it out. Oh, man. Primarch Victus. Impressive work on Tuchanka. I'm grateful that... Why didn't you tell me about the Cerberus bomb? Why hide that? What else are you keeping from me? I have nothing for you. For our alliance to work, I need to trust you. Our friendship is new, Commander. Would you trust me with information that puts your people, puts Earth, at risk? He has a good point there. Because I feel like if we did have information that put Earth completely at risk, we probably would not give him that information. Earth would probably come first. But I want him to give us, I want him to believe us. And we need to know more about this. So knowing nothing about this, and I just have this like feeling in my head that maybe possibly somehow the Turians began working with Cerberus and it sounds wild and I don't know if there's any truth to it but how else would they plant a bomb on Tuchanka know about it maybe they felt guilty about it and then they were like all right let's try to get this bomb off before bad things happen because they were maybe like trying to like Garrus said before we found out about the bomb they were trying to weaken the Krogan. I just didn't think that the Turians really had this kind of bad blood out. I mean, I know they have bad blood out for the Krogans, but I don't think it's as voiced as much as like the Krogans hate for the Turians, the Krogans hate for the Solarians. I feel like the Turians just kind of don't mention it as much. And it would be severely messed up if this is the case, that the Turians were working with Cerberus. They were like, all right, the world's going under. Let's go ahead and just blow them up while we have a chance so that there's no possible way that the Krogans could have a chance at life. I, I don't know. It seems bad. All of it seems really, really bad. Otherwise, why wouldn't he give us the information? Why wouldn't Primarch Victus be like, hey, there's a bomb. We found out about it. It's Cerberus's. We're trying to go get it, but my crew went down and it still needs to be taken care of. Can you help me? Instead, he brushed it under the rug, covered it up, put a little pretty bow on it, and then sent us out there without any information. It seems super suspicious. And he's right. I mean, our friendship is new. If he kept this information because he knows that if we found out about the Turians working with Cerberus, he knows that the Turians would be in a lot of trouble. Um, nobody would trust them right now when they're trying to blindside an entire species like that. that, that that's, that's a war. Um, it's really bad. I'm nervous to say, yes, I have to trust you. No, Earth comes first because I'd, I want him to tell me the truth. <clears throat> I want to say, yes, I have to trust you because yes, we do. But he makes up a really good point that if I did have information that put Earth at risk, I probably wouldn't tell him. If I had to choose between our alliance and lying to save my people, I'd choose Earth every time. Even if it costs you the Turian fleet? I see your point. Decisions like these weigh heavy on me. 
When I was a general, I could pass them up the chain of command. But now, I'm all I've got. Know what I mean? Sure. And? And... And that's all. Wait, there is one more thing, Commander. Thank you for saving my son. Yeah, the little, like, head shake in the end. Shepard, test verified. Results promising. Can synthesize for universal Krogan immunity. Well, that was Good. fast. Then you can put your knife away. The cure's ready? No, still need transmission vector. Cure useless unless given to entire species. You've infected them before? <laughs> Any ideas? You're usually full of ideas, Morton. <laughs> you altered the genophage before. There must be a way. Of course, always possibilities. But time limited. Can't create new infection strain from scratch. Groundwater? No, too slow. Voluntary inoculation risky. Population too scattered for airborne. Unless... Wait, yes! The Shroud. Constant global dispersion of air particles. Built by Salarians to repair atmosphere of Tuchanka. Also used by Turian. We used it to secretly spread the genophage virus. It ended the Krogan rebellions. I'd be careful who you tell that to. That was devious. It was clever. I mean, he may, he did. He ended the Krogan rebellions. He ended mass, mass murdering and taking over of colonies. It was something that had to be done. Um, yes, it was devious, but it was also very clever. I mean, when you're backs up against the wall and you're trying to figure out how to stop the Krogan rebellions, it was clever. If you're going to infect an entire population, that's the way to do it. Unless you're part of the population. Yes, yes, but useful now. Original genophage strain still in storage at Shroud facility. Can use it as transmission vector. Then you Shroud to blanket Tuchanka with cure. You clever little pie jack. That's our best shot, right there. Then finish your preparations and be ready to go, Morden. Of course. Ready when you need me. We'll be in Med Bay with Eve until then. Commander, Admiral Anderson is available on VidCom. It's kind of poetic that the way that they're going to cure the genophage is by the way that they started the genophage. It's kind of poetic in that way. And that's also why I said it was clever, too, because it's, it's going to stop the genophage if we actually get it out and everything goes well and, you know... It, Morden seems to think that it's a way that we could cure the genophage by doing that. It was really hard to say that in front of Rex, and his response was something that I I, I figured, but I wish that he would just tell us what was actually going on here. I'm grateful for all you've done, Commander. The situation with the Krogan is already complicated enough. Yeah. Not as complicated as waking up one day and being told you're the new Primarch. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm beginning to understand why leaders so often seem lonely. Worst case scenarios aren't just theories. They're what you'll be dealing with five minutes from now. That's why it helps to have allies. Yes, you're right, of course. Is there something I can help you with? Okay, nothing else. That's all. Of course, Commander. Okay, so I think she said Anderson is ready to talk to us on the communications over here. Shepard, so I imagine by now you've wiped the galaxy clean of Reapers and we can all come up for air? <sighs> Not quite. There have been a few complications. Aren't there always? Hackett filled me in on the crucible. Sounds like you've got some knots to untangle. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked to him about Kaylee yet. I'm just glad I could take care of one of them for you. I got it, you and Kaylee Sanders were close. I owe you for that one, Shepard. Kaylee and I met almost 20 years ago. Wow. We even had a run-in with Saren in his early days. She and I were... more than close. She misses you. I miss her. End of the world has a way of reminding you what you forgot to do. Maybe when the war's over, Kaylee and I will do something about that. You'll see her soon. I can hope. 
But you've got a bigger problem right now. Like a galaxy full of scared bureaucrats. Diplomacy is a pain. It's so true. It's part of the job, though. It is definitely part of the job. It's what you hired me to do. Mostly you were hired to kill Reapers. I hope you haven't been sidetracked by all the politics. <laughs> we have been. nothing I can't handle. What about you? What's happening on Earth? I'll spare you the details. But let's just say a lot of cities around the world have stopped checking in. That bad? You and I knew what we were in for, but everyone else? I don't think the shock's worn off yet. Are you safe? That changes by the hour. I caught a shuttle evac out of Vancouver, and now we're running from foxhole to foxhole just trying to stay alive. What about the Reapers? They're harvesting everything that moves. They're focusing on the big cities, which does give us some room to maneuver. You think you can hang on? Hell, we're still just trying to talk to each other. Right now, all we can do is organize the resistance at a local level. No lack of volunteers, at least. Everybody knows what's at stake. We haven't forgotten you. I don't know how we'll win this yet, but we will. Even if it kills me. Well, you've already died once, and that didn't slow you down. But let's not tempt fate. <laughs> Keep yourself safe, Shepard. You too, sir. We'll talk again soon. Anderson out. It's always good to be able to talk to Anderson. I'm glad that we're able to have those, like, intercom conversations with him every now and then. It's really nice. What was that all about with the Primarch? Turian's up to something? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Oh, he believes us? Are you sure? That's it for now, Rex. Let's get back to work. <laughs> uh, yeah. Something wrong? Morden. He got his tissue sample from me, all right. Let's just say scalpels were never meant to cut where he cut. Oh, no. What could that possibly mean? <laughs> I don't want to think about it too hard. You hear we had to evac another colony? We're losing a lot. Don't hear about the Reapers losing much. Well, Reapers don't have colonies. Neither does Cerberus. If they did, we could drop an asteroid on them. True. Commander, Cerberus is attacking civilians on Benning. We've been asked to help evacuate the planet. Okay, so it looks like we have an update for Benning and the Codex. We already knew that they were being attacked down there, so it's... I guess a good thing we didn't go and look for Benning already. I don't know if we had the opportunity to. Um, but we've already kind of known that. So that's kind of like a delayed response. We've heard from the guys in the bar that worked with Benning um, or worked with that guy's son. I can't remember his name. Yeah, it doesn't say the name. Just Dominic Osoba's son. Biotics is the... It may be possible to reverse the genophage by extracting an immunity from the genetic data of a cured Krogan female. A Salarian geneticist named Malin, a former student of Dr. Morden Solis, discovered the cure through unethical experimentation on live subjects. The complexity and durability of the genophage derives from biochemical countermeasures that the Salarians wove into the plague in an attempt to make the sterilization incurable. No one is certain of how Malin circumvented the countermeasures, but his work was complete enough to allow replication of his results. In its original form, the cure restored fertility but severely compromised the immune system. This resulted in slow, painful death for all but one of Malin's test subjects. If the beneficial aspects of the cure can be isolated, a specially tailored virus could repair the affected genes in other Krogan. In its original form, the cure restored fertility, but severely compromised the immune system. So that's what's going on with Eve. This resulted in slow, painful death for all but one of Malin's test subjects. If the beneficial aspects of the cure can be isolated, a specially tailored virus could repair the affected genes in other Krogan, which I'm assuming is what Malin has finally achieved, or uh, I'm sorry, Morden has finally achieved. So it looks like it's happening. Even without Malin's data, even without 
Um, even by destroying that. The John Gr Tachanka, the Krogan homeworld, boasts extreme temperatures, virulent diseases, and predatory fauna. Around 1900 BCE, the Krogan discovered atomic weapons and promptly sent their planet into a nuclear winter. The majority of the population retreated to underground bunkers, and Krogan culture slipped into a dark age, dominated by tribal clans. In 80 CE, decades into the Rachni Wars, the Salarian Union made first contact with the primitive Krogan and initiated a cultural uplift to shape them into a modern army capable of confronting the Rachni. During this uplift, the Salarians constructed the Shroud Facility on Tachunka to shield the planet from harmful forms of solar radiation. Later, during the Krogan rebellions, reproductive rates were curtailed by the Genophage, ensuring the Krogan remained a species in decline and Tachunka a desolate wasteland. That's a new piece of lore that I have never heard before um, about the Shroud facility. And I'm guessing now they're they're coming out with this because that's how we're going to cure the genophage. And it was also how the genophage began, which is very poetic in itself. But yeah, that's definitely a new piece of information. I haven't heard that one before. Benning was once a thriving human colony, but the Reapers have rounded up a large portion of the populace for processing. Some, popu some pockets of civilian resistance still elude the Reapers. However, and rescue attempts are underway. A resistance radio established during the early days of the attack continues to broadcast, exhorting survivors to band together and discuss rumors of safe havens. Unfortunately, the rumors have begun to result in ambushes, increasing the desperation of those who remain free. The elusive man likes to stick with his um, tried and true and tested ways of manipulating people. Through all of this, Benning's automated agricultural systems have continued to operate, leading to unpre unprecedented stores of food in the planet's granaries and warehouses. That's an interesting little tidbit to add there. I wonder if we can bring the food back to the citadel. The Shroud. What the Krogan call the Shroud is a technological remnant of the Solarian uplift. After Tuchanka's nuclear war released tons of smoke and dust into the atmosphere, the planet temporarily cooled from global dimming, except at the poles, where the albedo was lower by suit. As clouds trapped the resulting heat, enormous swaths of permafrost melted, releasing methane captures in uh, clathrates from previous millennia. This potent greenhouse gas created a runaway heat cycle that was called the nuclear summer. Without intervention, Tuchanka would have sunk into a slow but certain mass extinction. The Solarian solution was to assemble the shroud, a permanent sun shield of trillions of tiny diffractory lenses placed at the L1 Lagrange point. The point in space where the lenses naturally stable orbit would shade the planet. So kind of in like a funny note here and something that I never realized before, the Solarians, yes, they came in and first contact all of that stuff after the nuclear winter. If they didn't come in and have that first contact and ask them for help in the first place, there wouldn't be a Krogan race to begin with. So they definitely would have not survived at all if it had been, if it had not have been for the Solarians. I didn't know that. Interesting. The Solarians settled on a delivery method that became known as Shroud Towers. The towers were essentially enormous co coil guns that fire a payload of lenses into space, along with equipment necessary to monitor the payload trajectories. Many Krogan warlords enthusiastically approved of the plan, some because they believed in saving their homeworld, but most because they saw future military applications for the Shroud Towers. The Shroud was completed on schedule over the next few decades, by which time the Rachni held the warlords' full attention. The Krogan rebellions were not kind to the Shroud Towers. All but one was destroyed during the push for Krogan demilitarization. The remaining tower, often referred to as the Shroud, even though that is technically incorrect, was repurposed for cloud seeding and atmospheric repair. It remains on the landscape as an anachronism, a symbol of a time when Krogan and Solarians helped themselves by aiding one another. 
So yes, the Salarians did help the Krogans, and it wasn't all bad with them coming into first contact with them. I've always thought that the Salarians coming into first contact could have been avoided and it never would have started anything if the Krogans could have just lived and prospered in their dying world. Um, but it was dying like dying. It would have been no longer. Krogan would have not survived their own home world had it not been for the Salarians intervention. So super interesting. And another reason why I always say that nobody is blameless here. Nobody is the complete victim. Nobody is 100% a victim. The Krogans also have their problems. The Salarians definitely have their problems. It was not just one person is held higher into the angel sphere than the other. They're all on the same level playing field here. I'm shown that the Krogans are just not ready for this cure. And if it were to come tomorrow, if we were to send it out in the shroud tomorrow and they started repopulating and all that good stuff, yes, we're going through the Reaper War and everything. Um, but what if Rex doesn't survive the Reaper War? Or what if Eve doesn't survive? Eve is one of the people that is uplifting all of the women and forming the women together just as much as Rex is the main guy that is trying to get all of the Krogan on the same page and stop thinking in ways of the past and going into the future. I have a feeling that if I get to make the decision on whether or not we put the cure into the shroud, I'm going to be struggling. <laughs> I'm gonna be struggling. I don't know if at this point I have a say in any of that. I don't know if it'll come down to the end where Morden gets to put the special sauce into the genophage shroud creator to uplift and cure the genophage and i can say like no wait or something like that but i have a feeling that i'm gonna be very torn on what to do there are a lot of components that i struggle with when it comes to curing the genophage i just only see what has been happening in the past and it doesn't look great i mean like we just saw in this codex right here, how it talks about how the Krogan used the shroud, something that was given to them for a way for their home world to just exist and for all of them to exist. They were excited because they got to enthusiastically use it as a military application. Yes, this is the previous way of Krogan thinking, but what if Rex dies? What if he doesn't make it? Do you really think that he's turned enough people to go back into, to be in the new way of thinking? I think at this point, he hasn't converted enough of them. I don't think that there's any form of hierarchy here where like, if Rex dies off, I don't think that anyone else is going to step up and take his spot and his voice. I just don't see that right now. And maybe I haven't spent enough time down on Tuchanka. I don't know. Maybe once we go down to Tuchanka, I'll change my mind again. But right now I'm feeling very wishy-washy about the whole thing still. I'm feeling very, feeling very wishy-washy about the entire thing. So I'm gonna go around and do our rounds and go talk to everybody. Don't worry, Edie. Once the Krogan are gone, we'll get rid of the smell. While this body has all factory sensors, I do not have positive or negative associations with any specific scent. <laughs> oh, well, lucky you. Yeah, that's very interesting to think about. <laughs> so that went well. Glad to see that Turians can flip out and lose their shit just like the rest of us. True. They're under a lot of pressure. Yeah. You stole the Normandy, got blown up by the Collectors, and sent us on a suicide mission at the Galactic Core. And I haven't mutinied once. Not once. That's actually really true. Joker's been a good sport about all of this. Commander? I am impressed by your continued existence, Shepard. The probability of surviving as long as you have is low. Wow. Hello, Shepard. Thanks, Edie. That was definitely what someone wants to hear. I think she needs to go back to reading her human notes. Are you all right, Commander? It sounded like things were bad down there. The Turians took some heavy losses, but we got them out okay. Well, whatever you did down there stirred up a lot of Turian comm traffic. What are they saying? Sorry, it's encrypted. Cracking it would take at least a week, and it would be wrong. Commander? 
feel like we should still crack it. They're definitely up to something. Something's going on. Stop beating yourself up. It was crazy of me to ask you to join the Normandy back then. But I let you down. I let Shepard down. I let everyone listed on that memorial wall down. You had the courage to support Shepard. Joker did. Garrus and Tally did. But Ashley didn't. Liara didn't. Were they cowards? I think not. Greg, you're one of the bravest and most loyal men I know. You were meant to be here, right now. We have a war to win. So clear your head and focus. <laughs> okay, okay, you win. It will not be mentioned <laughs> again. Liara didn't. I'm guessing she said that because of the whole shadow broker thing, so no one really knows about that. Um, it's pretty obvious now that we're on board with Liara and she's in her little hidey hole with all of her computers um, working her magic, but I'm confused on why she said Liara didn't. Liara has literally had our back this entire time. She's the one who handed over our body to Cerberus. So that was a little strange. Commander. Hello, Commander. I wonder why she would say Liara didn't. I think Ashley is pretty much the only one that did not have our back in ME2. Um, I'm gonna go talk to Liara and Garrus first, actually. Hello? I can talk to you? Wait, is this Cortez? Wait, stop. Oh, no, it's just a salute. Okay. Dr. Tassoni found useful information in the data you recovered, Commander. Okay. So, we did find advanced biotic up, um, implants. Let's go ahead and open that. So we can get power damage bonus or a power cooldown. I think I'm gonna get damage. Okay, nice. Between Kasumi and Professor Olawson. Hi, Professor. You know that one-of-a-kind point-to-point comm server you were talking about the other day? Do you have information about the whereabouts? I have something better. Check your front door. But this server is locked in a Cerberus facility. Not anymore. This will be invaluable for, cru for the Crucible. Thank you, Miss Gato. You're the brilliant astrophysicist. Astrophysicist. But I cannot say that today. Astrophysicist. <laughs> I'm just a tech expert doing some odd jobs. By the way, you could not believe how many credits Cerberus leaves just lying around in the open. <laughs> what, did you transfer a bunch of money from Cerberus over there? I think they're hanging out in Garrus's area. I didn't actually look. I just saw their names together. Enough about me. What were you doing before we met up here? Oh, you know, this and that. Come on, spill it to Sony. Very well. I fought several explosive battles with Cerberus. I helped Shepard stop a robotic assassin on Mars. Oh, and I discovered plans for a Prothean Doomsday device that were buried for 50,000 years. <laughs> yeah, so just this and that, huh? This is so funny. They're just chilling in here drinking. There's like some mood lighting going on. Should I be worried? Garrus, if you try to steal Liara from me, we're gonna have words, brother. <laughs> Also, are they smoking in here? Is that weed? Turians on a secret mission to Tachanka, huh? No one told me anything about it. Okay, that's super weird. Especially if they didn't tell, like, Garrus anything. I'm curious to see how this bomb on Tachanka plays out. I don't suppose ignoring it is an option. No, Garrus. Ignoring it is definitely not an option. What the hell? Not right now. Yeah, I know, because you're busy um, hitting on my girlfriend and smoking a J in here. So, What's going on? Archangel. You heard about that, huh? Your sojourn on Omega generated quite a few articles, not to mention security footage. There's one thing I couldn't dig up, though. Did you really take out three Blue Suns mercenaries with one bullet? No, of course not. The third guy had a heart attack. Oh, my God. Not fair to count him. That's hilarious. 
All right, let's go see what Eve and Morden are up to. I think I'm going to talk. Mm, perhaps stimulate cell regeneration with a. Could. Oh. Uh, but should test for the. That's worse. <laughs> I was about to say, is he censoring himself for Eve? Gosh, Morden is so kind. Shepard, Eve ready for travel to Tuchanka. She's ready for travel? How's she doing? No fever currently. Heart rate elevated. Likely stress. Eating appropriately. Could use another blanket. Something soft. Prefer to let her recover fully before synthesizing cure. My medical recommendation. My people don't have time for that. Her opinion, somewhat different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the Shroud. What can you tell me about the Shroud? Climate regulator. Counteracts radiation damage to Tuchanka's atmosphere from nuclear war. Particles emitted from main tower form layer that mitigates ultraviolet bombardment, prevents atmospheric escape of necessary elements. And your people put it up? Yes, when uplift process began. Demonstration of goodwill to Krogan. Stabilize climate, impress population. Combined with technological gifts, easy to gain Krogan support against Rachni. So it was like a, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, but they saved their civilization. Without the Solarians coming in, putting in the shroud, there would be no Krogan. It's hard to unsee that now. All right, I don't think besides the shroud, there's any other new things to talk about. Nice talking with you, Morden. We'll be here if you need me. Continuing to study shroud in meantime. Okay. Something else, Commander? Female shaman, Rax the genophage, Morden, Malin's experiments. I think we've already asked about all of this. I don't know about the Morden Solus thing, though. How is Morden then treating you? Oh, yeah, we did. Better than Krogan males do. Yeah. He's not like a typical Solarian. No, no, no. Organ redundancy results in new period before metaphase. Can't alter that. Damage to telomeres, premature aging. He does that but I sense pain in him, too. He told me about his work on the genophage. I should consider him an enemy. Yet I think seeing my sisters and I changed something in him. A sorry Borgia offspring have an allergy to dairy and... Well, it wasn't his ear. <laughs> Thanks for talking to me. It's my pleasure, Commander. All right, so nothing new with Eve either. Let's see if Javik has anything new to say now that we've taken him on a mission. <laughs> you should not have let the Turian soldier evade his responsibility. I take it Protheans didn't forgive many mistakes? If he had been under my command, I would have marooned him in the desert, buried him in sand up to his neck, and let the wildlife feast on his eyes. Wow. If he survived that, I would have rewarded him by shooting him in the head. Good soldiers are a precious resource. The stupidity of one cannot be allowed to jeopardize the lives of the others. People make bad calls all the time, though. I see where they're coming from because it was obviously a task given to him because he is the son of who he is. But everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes bad shots and bad calls, especially when you're, like, new in command. Um, heck, we've made a lot of really bad calls, too. So it happens. I think they're harping on him a little bit too much, but yeah. The Turians are hiding something, Commander. Yes, they are. Be careful. They definitely are. I have a very strong feeling that they're working with Cerberus in some form. Um, the fact that Garrus doesn't know about it seems like there is just someone in a very high power, Primarch Victus. Um, that could potentially be just working on his own and doing things to try to blindside. It kind of reminds me of the story that Garrus told us when we first met Primarch Victus about how he let the Turians and I think it was some other species that were fighting alongside each other 
trying to take control of the situation. He ended up pulling his troops out, knowing that they were going to go in, get annihilated, and then going back in to claim the victory. Sure, there was a victory. It was a messy way to go about doing it. At the time, I thought, hey, we need that kind of brains on our side because we need to do things outside of the box to fight the Reapers. And I thought he would make a great leader, even if he didn't want the role. Usually people that don't want the role end up making great leaders. Although I have already been proven wrong in my theory of that with Anderson. I think if I had to go over and pick Anderson over Udina again, I would pick Udina over Anderson because it stressed him out and he wasn't ready for the role. And he ended up getting very wrapped up into other personal matters and not really paying attention, dreading every time he, that he had to walk into the office. So maybe my theory on that is coming to an end that people that don't want the title end up doing a very good job at it because Anderson has already proven us wrong. But Victus, I feel like it sounds like something that he would do based on the information that we have been given him, but from him before about his past sneaky endeavors that he has taken on to try to get the jumps on people or claim the victory. It just, it sounds like something that he could potentially be capable of, which is scary. Tuchunka was not always a wasteland. It once had jungles and forests. The Krogan didn't need the Reapers to destroy their world. They did it on their own. Such a foolish race. It's true. It's unfortunately very true. I am with my own thoughts. I am with my own thoughts. Kenneth, do you ever think about when we were abducted by... No, I don't. Me neither. <laughs> that seemed convincing. Sometimes keeping the grid balanced is pure murder. <laughs> Power grid is in the green. Power grid is in the green. Commander. All right. I don't think there's anyone down here. Um, starboard, subdeck. Yeah, no one's down here. I'm not going to go down there. I miss having Jack on board. I wonder if we'll ever get to talk to her again. Dire news from Earth. Off the radar, reefing begins in rural areas. Millions are dead in the Central Asian wilderness, even more in Sub-Saharan Africa. We'll give you the gruesome view of what happens when the Reapers don't stop to indoctrinate. Now, in the battle space. Commander. Gosh, is it just me or does her news reporting just kind of like draw like shells up your spine? The fact that she can so easily and monotonely talk about these events. And sure, that's what news reporters have to do. They can't get emotional about things. But when you're in the middle of talking about possibly the world ending, I feel like a little bit more like sadness or remorse or something in your voice needs to happen because you can't just be like, oh, they're starting there. She's like abbreviating things and making up like terminology, like see where they're reaping now. Like we've no, no, that just is it seems wrong to me, unfortunately. <laughs> Just cross checking our parts inventory. Ma'am. Ma'am. Parts of the chunk are reminded me of the desert back home. The lizards and worms are bigger, but you know, the sand and everything. Primark's son is in over his head, no? Oh, for sure. Do you hear that hum? Is that just me? No, there's definitely like a boom, boom hum down here. Do you hear that hum? Is that just me? <laughs> Man, I would not be able to sleep down here. He sleeps down here, right? He has a bed down here. I would not be able to. There's just no way. I think these are his bed. Yeah, that's his like little cot. Not with that horrible like humming noise. I couldn't. 
All right, everyone, that's it for today. We did a ton of just like running around the Citadel for pretty much half of our time here today. I think it's really great that we're able to get some of Arya's mercenaries on board. We now have the Blood Packs, the Blue Suns, and the Eclipse on board. And I'm pretty sure they gave us like 200 total points in the War Assets field. So that is amazing and something that I'm really, really grateful for that Arya could help us with. But I feel like the missions trying to get them on board wasn't as juicy or exciting as I thought that they were going to be. And I struggle with saying the word boring, but it was just... It was just a little like boring and a little bit silly that that was like the main drawing point like oh shepherds in my captivity i caught shepherd all by myself and then they were like dumb enough to believe it i don't know it just seemed very strange and silly i'm glad that we went on and did the very juicy mission on tuchanka because i feel like there is a lot to unfold in this story and i'm looking forward to figuring out what the heck is going on with Primarch Victus, this bomb, the Citadel, the Turians, Tuchanka, and how all of those five things are put into one bowl. I'm just, I, something has to be going on. And I have a very, very strong feeling that Primarch Victus was working behind the scenes with Cerberus. They planted the bomb to try to get a one-up on the Krogan species as a whole and just kind of destroy their planet. As the Reapers are coming in, what better time would it be than now to destroy their species as a whole? But knowing that Garrus knew nothing about it and that we haven't really heard much about this bomb or anything like that, I have a really strong feeling that Primarch Victus is working on his own. He hired his son, someone that he could trust, to go out and perform this mission. Maybe he started having second thoughts about it, or maybe he had his son go out and pull this mission, pull the bomb, because Primarch Victus set this up before he became Primarch, and now he is kind of backtracking. He doesn't want that on his hands. He is now in a higher spot, and if they found out that he is the reason behind all of this, it could start a lot of stuff. I have all these theories in my head. I'm not sure if any of them are right, but I'm very interested to see how the rest of this unfolds because we've got a lot to unpack. We've got a bomb, we've got Tuchanka, Krogan, Turians. So next time coming in, I am going to check out the bomb on Tuchanka and head straight in and do that one because I am genuinely curious about what is going on, how the heck Cerberus and the Turians are working together seemingly and I just want to get to the bottom of it. After that, we're probably going to go and try to rescue the Krogan team that Rex told us to try to look for in the Attican Traverse. So those are the two main things that I am looking forward to next episode. It will be very action-packed, it seems, much more spicy than today's episode, although the ending of today was, was getting into some really good stuff. As you guys can see, my fish are still out of the tank. I have no idea what these fish are on or what we've been feeding them. I feel like Kelly did something to my fish. They weren't like this before Kelly took them to her house. Also today, I learned some new stuff about more of the timeline of the Solarians and the Krogans and the Turians. And the more I unfold, the more I am struggling with this decision. And like I said, I don't know if I am the one that ultimately gets to push the big button of cure genophage, but I have a feeling that we're going to be in for a very big emotional, mental pretzel trying to figure out what to do. Because last time I said, I want to stand by Rex. I trust him. I want to cure the genophage because I want to trust him. And I, I think that having all of the Krogans on board and curing the genophage could be a really good thing for, for us going forward because we all need to work together. And that is seemingly the only way that we can get the Krogan on board to even help us. Every time that I read the Codex, I run into more information on reasons why I shouldn't trust the Krogan and why I should be very 
on edge about curing the genophage when I know their past. So I am very excited to go into next episode to see what's going on with this bomb and Cerberus and Victus. And I have a lot of people on my do not trust list lately. I feel like it's growing. It's growing every day. Now I don't know who to actually trust when it comes to who's on board the ship. I mean, think about it this way. If Victus really is capable of talking to Cerberus, and planting this bomb on Tuchanka, trying to take out Krogan, civilization as a whole. There, that is just very, very sketchy behavior. I knew that he was capable of kind of like thinking outside the box, blindsiding and making calls that maybe not everybody agrees with, but this one is an unforgivable. It is very, okay. <laughs> My God, <laughs> Zumi's out of the cage. Zumi's out of the cage and he keeps disappearing. <laughs> Has anybody else's fish ever done this? I swear, I feel like they're just like forming together now. Like all of the fish are in the tank. Like, hey, did you know that we can go outside of the tank? No, I didn't know that. And now they're all forming this clan of like outside the tank fish. And now it's just getting out of hand. I don't know what's going on. All right. So I think I've talked your guys' ear off long enough. I'm getting very distracted by these fish again. So I'm going to call it and I will see you all in the next episode. We're going to figure out where the heck this bomb came from and what is going on and who's starting it and hopefully stop the bomb before it goes off so i'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next one bye everyone